Hello and welcome to the Hurling Show, sponsored by Arga Retro. Uh, let's, you can type in our game into our Arga Retro website and you get 15% off these lovely jerseys, including this Leash jersey, which I have on today after yesterday's Leash County final. Shane Stapleton is still recovering from Kula and Boris Ali being knocked out of the championship last weekend, so I'm in the chair today. Delighted to have uh, Kilkenny legend Richie Power with me as well. Richie, how are you today? Good, very not a bother. How are you? Not too bad. I presume you're watching the Kilkenny final closely. Um, Bally Hale are some machine to be able to keep going. Lockton's really through the kitchen sink at them, but they like a brilliant second half performance. I thought nearly that they were going to pull away in that in that third quarter, but it was in that final quarter when they really put the shutters down and weren't letting Lockton's in. But a great final and a great advertisement for Kilkenny Club Harlan. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know? Um... I suppose in the build up to the final, I personally I, I didn't see a, a, see that huge performance from all Octons. You know, I I'd seen them in one or two games during the league stages of the championship, and then in the semi final against Tullerone, I, I just felt that they they just kind of fell over the line, really. So you know, they must have really put the work in over the two weeks in the build up to the final. And you know, in fairness, they got their matchups right at the back for a, for a lot for for a long time. Um, you know, I, I, I believe they held the full forward line, the Ballyhale full forward line scoreless until Owen Reid got that point towards the end of the game. So, you know, in fairness to them, they, as you said, they threw the kitchen sink at the Shamrocks, but the Shamrocks being the Shamrocks, they never panicked. You know, they stuck to their game plan. They they dragged TJ out the field to get on ball and, and he was really the, the kind of orchestrator of the, the orchestra, you know, for the last 15, 20 minutes. And, um, you know, look, you have to, you have to be, you have to admire Ballyhale. You know, like we're we're next door neighbours. We've we've had a fair few battles down over the years, but you know, you have to admire what they're doing down there for such a small parish and um, just incredible. Again, four in a row, and who's to say it's going to stop there? I think the club was set up forty nine years ago, and within that time, they have nineteen county titles, and they're now one behind Tullerone, which which says something about it. This is obviously their second the second four, four in a row in their history. But well, as you say there, it's some uh, it's some statement of uh, depth in a squad and depth in a team that you can hold Colin Fenley, a two-time All-Star, scoreless. You can hold a young hurler of the year scoreless in Owen Cody and you still clock 319 and win kind of pulling up. Oh, listen, and, and you know, I was just talking to someone there t- this morning actually about it and like even... You know, Adrian Mullen was was probably quite for his own standards. Um, you know, Owen Reid up until the last probably five ten minutes. Do you know, so if all if you had a told O'Loughlin Sunday morning that you'd hold Colin, Owen Cody scoreless, you'd you'd hold Adrian Mullen. I think to a goal maybe or maybe a goal and a point. I think they would have taken that. Um, and you know would have really fancied their chances. But you know, Ronan Corcoran, Brian Cody, TJ. You know, being TJ really really stood up and um. As I said, it's it's worrying for for the other clubs in Kilkenny, and and I suppose worrying for for clubs around the country going forward that the Shamrocks have won a county final without those players kind of hitting top form. Where do you stand on that? You know, Ballygunner won eight in a row in Waterford, and people would say, uh, while they're unbelievably competitive outside of Waterford, maybe Waterford hurling the Waterford hurling club championship isn't that competitive because they're so strong. Where do you stand on that in Ballyhead? Ballyhead's kind of dominance there is it good or is it good or a bad thing for Kilkenny hurling? Um, personally, I don't think it's a good thing. Um, Vernie, to be honest, but again, in saying that, it, it's not it's not because I don't think the Shamrocks are good or, or don't have a, an aw- a, an outstanding team. But I just feel that the rest of the teams, you know, have to get to that level or, or find a way of dethroning Ballahale. And you know, they've had four years of trying now, and, and like the other four in a row wasn't wasn't that long ago either. So, you know, I just think it's. It's probably a worrying factor for Kilkenny as a whole, you know, going forward, um, that we don't have other teams kind of really, really pushing the Shamrocks. But um, look, as I said, you can't but admire what they're doing down there. Um, it's the same names, same households, same families, and it's 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 phenomenal. And I suppose it's it's no different to Limerick at the moment. They've they've set the bar in Kilkenny, and it's up to the other clubs around to to try and get to that level. Just a good comment in there from Red Lad. Um, he said, whatever about Bally Hale winning four in a row, Bally McCarvey have done 40 in a row in Waterford, ladies, uh, senior <laughs> football. So they're a bit yeah. off that. They're 36 off that. But it is. it was It was a great to see. It was a great final. Just a comment in from Joe Butler there. The Kilkenny County final was a fine game and credit must be given to both teams and the referee, Owen Behan, he allowed the game to flow in its usual manner and styles while retaining control. I was, I was actually a big fan of that. There was a lot of times where lads were going to ground and maybe even at county level, you would have seen freeze blown. But 
you need referees to be um, creative somewhat with the rules or it's just a free-taking contest. And in fairness, the one beaten, he did a great job in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, and uh, probably there was times where it, 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 it felt like it might boil over, do you know. And in fairness, he took control. He, um, he, show, he showed cards where he needed to show them and just literally he wasn't taking any aggro off, off either side. And I, I think, you know, probably after the first 10, 15 minutes, um, where there was kind of, you know, there was a lot of lads going to ground, as you said. I, I just think players kind of knew then that, you know, they weren't going to get anything easy. Um, and obviously then there's no point back answering the referee because he's not going to change his mind. You know, I've been I've been a, a terrible for doing it in, in the past myself, personally, but, you know, at, at the end of the day... finally admitted it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen a referee change his mind uh, to this day. And, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. So I think it's... You know, it's a, it's a discipline thing when it comes to, to teams and their players, when it comes to referees and officials. Richie, what changed in the second half? Like, well, Auckland's were absolutely outstanding in the first half. In particular, uh, like Jordan Malai was brilliant in defence. Connor here, he was an absolute tower at wing back and he was getting on top of Adrian Mullen. Uh, Paddy Deegan got two brilliant scores uh, from those short sidelines in the first half. Tony Forrest was keeping the wraps on Colin Fenley. Robbie Buckley was a thorn in their side in, the, in, in attack as well. Did anything in particular change in the second half? Was it O'Loughlin's energy levels dropped or did Ballyhale just up with a gear? Um, I, I think, funnily enough, Ernie, I, I think the, the, a huge point, a huge turning point in that game was the two points to Shamrock Scott just before half time. Um, you know, TJ got into space, maybe an opportunity of a goal, goal creating chance, popped it over the bar, and. Um, Dara Corcoran then got a great point off the off the left wing as well. So you know, rather than going down five points, rather than going in five points down, the Shamrocks were then going in only one score down. Um, you know, and their whole mentality changes, in my opinion. But you know, I listened to Ronan Corcoran after the game, giving his man of the match speech. He said they didn't they didn't go in, they didn't start roaring, they didn't start shouting. They just they got together. Um, you know, and they just said that they needed to get back to what they were doing all year. Um, and just their big players kind of really stood up in the end. You know, um, I think Joey Holden came into a big time in the second half, like Ronan Corker and Brian Cody in the middle of the field took over in the middle of the field. And then obviously, as I said, TJ just came further and further out the field and just got on ball. Do you know, and, the, and what I thought was brilliant from the Shamrock's point of view is they were looking for TJ every time. The half back line midfielders were just popping the ball to TJ and like he took, he took a couple of great scores himself but while also giving in some great ball into the inside forward line. So I do think, and, you know, O'Loughlin's work rate in the first half was just phenomenal. You know, they hit anything that moved, they were hitting it. They didn't care, you know, who it was. They were just hitting it. Their, their tackling, their, 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 their team play was, was outstanding. And I think, yeah, maybe legs in a little bit in that middle, middle third. And I think they overplayed it a little bit, you know, on a few occasions. They tried... They tried walking the ball into the net, and obviously, like we saw, the, the the one ball that broke down, it ended up in the net at the other end, and that for me was the real turning point in the game. There was a couple of ones. I remember Connor here; he saw one through, and he could have put it over, and he gave a hand pass, and Adrian Mullen blocked it, and it ends up yeah. over the bar down the far. And that happened a couple of times. All right, uh, Flash just made a good point there, and I think it's very uh, they're, like Ballyhale are very like Limerick, very like the Dubs footballers, any really really good team. Flash just said, I thought after the first half it was going to be a Lachlan's day. But the Shamrocks completely took over in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. The ability of the really great teams to be playing badly and to turn it around, like Limerick against Tipperary this year, Dublin, I don't know how many times in football, Bally Hale even yesterday, the majority of teams, when the kitchen sink is thrown at them, and you've been in games, I'm sure, as well, where you're just kind of shell-shocked and you find it hard to turn it around within the game. If you played them next week, you'd be up for it and ready again. But the really great teams are able to turn it around mid-game, which is such an outstanding quality, really. And and that's exactly it. I, I think the Shamrocks really didn't know what hit them in the first half yesterday. You know, I, I don't think they thought that O'Loughlin were going to come with such an intensity, such a work rate, such uh, such aggression. Um, and I just think when the Shamrocks got in for that for the halftime break, that, that 10 minutes was crucial to them. And as I said, it was just about sticking to their game plan. I think the one thing about the Shamrocks and, you know... As I said, there'd be a tint of jealousy there, but like they just the, the will to win, the, that winning mentality, and just they never panicked. So like even when they went five points down before half time, there was no panic. As we saw TJ pop that point, you know, Dara Cork and the same thing. They just never panicked. And I think they just have this self belief that 
you know, if they can turn things around and get on top, that they'll win a game. And I just think that that's the way they go into every game. They, they know themselves if they hit form that I don't think there's a team out there that can live with them. But even when they're not playing well, and they didn't play well in, in, in the semi final against James Stevens either. You know, similar enough to those players we may already mentioned, you know, they haven't, they haven't stood out in a semi final or a final for the Shamrocks, but they still find a way to win. And that, as you said, is, is, is the sign of a great, great team. I presume would they be your clear All Ireland favourites at the moment? And Leinster and All Ireland favourites, like like realistically, we did power rankings a few weeks ago. They are probably the best team in the country, and the only thing that's probably going to stop them is themselves, really. Yeah, look, I I I would believe so, and I I would I'd be on the same wavelength. Yeah, I I think it's only themselves that you know might might catch them. Um, I believe they're playing Mount Leinster Rangers in two weeks' time in in the the Leinster Championship. You know. As you mentioned, Bally Gunner there. Um, I know down there, you know, they're I won't say they're sick of winning Watford titles, but you know they go back training every year, and it's it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to win in Watford, and you know to get a monster title. And I think the All Ireland title is what's eluding them down there at this moment in time. So probably the Shamrocks number one, and you'd have to say Bally Gunner maybe number two. But I know there's still a couple of county finals to be played um, as well. You know, in in Cork in Tipperary as well so I'm sure they'll have something to say about it as well Yeah Schlock Neil's attentions were taken away from the big ball yesterday were beaten in the Derry football final so they'll yeah. be focusing just on the small ball which they haven't really got too many clear runs at uh, in previous years so that, that'll be interesting uh, just on three, three of the Shamrocks lads TJ Reid Colin Fenley Owen Reid winning their 10th county title and TJ in particular I think TJ started out as a 16 year old in 2004 and there's only been four years of him playing senior hurling where he hasn't played a county final. It's 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 unbelievable. Like the longevity of him at uh, club and county level and his ability to stay fit as well. Like I, I don't recall him I can't think off the top of my head him, him missing a game. It's it's phenomenal really. Henry, Henry only has six Kilkenny senior hurling championship yeah. medals and the three yeah. boys have ten. And Owen Reed is another one. I think I think Owen Reed has every medal in the book, I think, to the best of my knowledge. He's Fitzgibbon, colleges, club, county all Ireland's like those three lads, like the, the longevity of them, it's outstanding, really. Oh, it's, it's, I, I must have read the same article that you read, but like, yeah, with TJ, it's just, you know, he's, he's been hurling with the Shamrocks for 18 years, their senior team for 18 years, and for four of those, he hasn't been in a county final, you know, so he's, he's been in 14, won 10, lost four, um, and like his physique, even now, is is absolutely out of this world. You know, he's he really looks after himself. Obviously he has the gym here in Kilkenny. Um, you know, so he's around that environment which gives him the time to to put a lot of time into his physique and his fitness. But like it's it's it is it's it's frightening to think. Um and as I said, I don't I don't see it stopping at, at 10, you know, and and that's the frightening thing. Um you know you mentioned Colin Owen Reed. I believe Owen has 10 as well and he's started in all 10. Um, I don't think TJ started in 2006. If if memory, if my memory is correct, he came on as a sub, so he didn't start in all ten of his. So, but Owen, Owen has, you know, and people, you know, you nearly forget the the unsung heroes, and like Owen has certainly been one of those for the Shamrocks down through the years, you know, because he's he's incredible to stay going as long as he's going, but he always popped up with some of the most important scores for the Shamrocks, and uh, was no different yesterday with you know creating the goal for. Um, Joey Cudahy and and then getting the point not long after it. So, yeah, it's 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 amazing. You know, I I I don't have one. I'd love to have one, but the boys have ten. And I suppose if you ask them where they are, they probably they probably don't know. But um, look, as I said, it's that it's that winning feeling. You you can't beat it. And and them as a club, you know, are doing it year in year out. And you just have to you just have to admire them. Owen Reid is one of these, uh, he's an absolute nightmare to mark. You could, you could hit 10 balls off him in a row and you take your eye off him for two and he could ha he'd have two goals in the back of the net. He's just absolutely sweet corner forward. Uh, just a quick one, Richie, on Paddy Deegan. Um, I, that was the, I, I'd seen glimpses of him playing in the attack and various clips and things over the last couple of games. But I, was, I have to say I was very impressed with him yesterday. Like he's... Uh, like, is there is there any chance that Brian Cody will look at him as a forward next year, or not? Maybe not even an inside forward. Maybe even a half forward in the mould of a real hard working up and down half forward. His his physique, his fitness, his strength is massive as well, and he's obviously clearly able to take a score. Is that something that that could happen in twenty twenty two? Um, or has or is Brian said in his ways and will he if, keep? If yesterday, back? if yesterday hadn't happened. 
I would have said, no way, absolutely not. Because I've seen, as I said, I've seen O'Loughlin's on a few occasions this year. And for me, I thought the, the decision to play Paddy on a full forward line to start and, and kind of give him a free reign, I thought it was, it was mind-boggling. I actually thought it was, I thought Andy Comerford was, was off his rocker. But um, like to see what he'd done yesterday and, you know, I thought a massive thing about yesterday was when they actually did move him out the field to, to around the middle of the field to try and, you know, break the, the tide. I, I thought they'd no ball winner inside then as well for the likes of an Owen Wall and these guys to play off Paddy. So, you know, I, I thought Paddy's work rate yesterday stands out above everything else. You know, I know he scored two four, but his work rate, um, he won he won a couple of frees, took his scores very well. Now he hadn't scored an awful lot all season up until yesterday, but um from an inter county perspective Maybe you could mould him into a 10 or 12, you know, an Owen Larkin kind of player, you know, up and down the wing, hard working. But I personally, I'd love to see him in the middle of the field because I just think that he has an engine to, to go from box to box when it needs to be. And, um, you know, there's no better man to kind of get on breaking ball and win that dirty ball than Paddy. So for me, I'd love to see him around eight or nine. But, you know, maybe it's maybe it's something that, that Brian will, you know, maybe try in, in the league next year. I don't know. Yeah, just a comment in there from ML89 said, I don't know how Joey Holden hasn't been getting game time for Kilkenny. Super club player and has never let Kilkenny down when played either. Made a great uh, made a great block off the line at one stage in the second half. He's just so solid and dependable. Like He's definitely been one of the best club hurlers in Kilkenny over the last God knows how long. He really, like, I think people are clouded by the 2016 All-Ireland when, like, to me, he was hung out to dry uh, with all the space in front of Shemi Callan. But outside of that game, I don't really recall him having a, a bad game, and he's never been found wanting when he was when he was needed by Kilkenny, in my opinion. And anyway, what would you say to that? Like he's a great, he's he's a great, he's been a great soldier for Kilkenny, but probably hasn't played enough in the last couple of years. No, absolutely, I, I agree a hundred percent, Fernie, with you because you know you, you mentioned that game in twenty sixteen. Like you can you can bring back the best fullbacks in 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 that Harlan have ever seen in 2016 and no one would have been able to mark Shamie Callan on that day because of number one the space and number two the the quality of ball that was being struck into him from from the outside forward line and, and midfielder so for me yeah Joey I believe was made a bit of a scapegoat after that game but apart from that he has been one of the most consistent hurlers um that Kilkenny have had over the over the last probably I don't know 10 years he's been there um and yeah i i agree i sometimes had to question why he wasn't getting more game time over the last couple of seasons um because i believe he was he was going well in training um and he's been always always extremely good um for the, the shamrocks like he's never let the shamrocks down when it's come to the big day and that's the kind of player you want at inter-county level you know you want the, the really really top club hurlers and that's what joey has been for the last 10 years for the shamrocks and it has been it's been it's been a it's been a talking point around Kilkenny as to why he wasn't getting more game time. But I suppose look, it's it's what's happening inside in the training field. And as I said, I don't really know what 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 was happening in there. Um, he obviously kind of fell out of favour with Brian, and um, you know that's that's what happens. But I don't think Joey will mind too much. You know, waking up this morning with another county medal in his back pocket. No, definitely not. It's a it's a nice solace for him. Uh, speaking of other players that have been great stalwarts for Kilkenny. Um, I think most people probably would have expected it, but Colin Fenley confirmed his inter-county retirement uh, yesterday as well. Just a couple of quotes from him after the game. Uh, he's 32 now. He said, no, I'll be finished up. Uh, I've had enough. I had a year to think about it, and I'm glad I took that time to think about it. I'm happy playing with the club, and there are so many young lads coming through. I had a great time playing with Kilkenny. Uh, fantastic, so it was. I, I always, kind of, between Shane O'Donnell and Colin Fenley, I said they were the most foulable players in the inter-county <laughs> game. Colin, Colin on his day was just on, on, unstoppable at county level. Once he got that ball, there was only one thing in his mind. Absolutely. And like even even today at club level, like you saw in the first minute yesterday, you know, when he when he got the ball in his hand and put the head down, like there's there, there's there's very few players in the game that, that, that you can stop when they do that. And Colin certainly is one of them. Um, you know, but I suppose we probably knew in Kilkenny probably last year when he when he took the year out that it was going to be very hard for Colin maybe to get to get his body and get himself into that physical and mental strength to to maybe go back in and, and give it another year or two because you know the the commitment that it takes at inter county level now is 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 gone up a savage amount even even since I since I retired so you know 
Colin probably took a, took the year away, probably realised that there's there is more to life than than maybe inter county hurling. Probably enjoyed the free time that he had, and um, you know probably had the decision made a long way back if you if you if you ask me. But um, I wasn't surprised to to hear Colin coming out and announce it after yesterday's game. But like as you said, he's only thirty two, and <laughs> the frightening thing for for club hurlers in Kilkenny is he probably has another four or five years to to play with the Shamrocks, and uh, that in itself is a frightening prospect. Yeah, I'd say the um, I'd say the Mount Leinster Ranger boys are worried that he's going to turn it on in the in the Leinster quarter final when they meet them. Uh, just a quick question from Adrian McGrath. There, he said, "Are Ballyhale a brilliant club side laden with inter county players, or simply a really good side in a county that is beginning to struggle to produce real inter county quality?" Uh, difficult, uh, difficult <laughs> question for you to answer. But like, what 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 would be your thoughts on that? Um. I I I agree maybe with 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 both points there. Um, I would I would definitely say they are just a phenomenal, outstanding club team. Um, you know, there's there's no better club team in the country, in my opinion, at this moment in time, and there hasn't been probably over the last ten or fifteen years. You know, than than Ballyhill Shamrocks. Um, whether you know there there's there's questions there about inter county hurlers being produced in Kilkenny at the moment. I suppose that's the big question at the moment that that we're all kind of you know waiting to see and and hoping that we will see new new blood introduced over the next kind of couple of seasons and it's up to players to kind of step up to that. But at the moment, it's we haven't seen that this year. Maybe in in the in the senior and intermediate championships, you know, there's been no real kind of standout young talent that hasn't been you know inside with with county teams at the moment. So maybe you know maybe that comment is right. Um, but I suppose. You can't, Ballyhale can't do anything about that. You know, they can only look after their own house and they've certainly done that and they're, they're doing a great job of doing it. And, um, you know, look, I would I would certainly love to see the, the, the championships in Kilkenny a lot more competitive than what they have been maybe over the last couple of seasons. But as I said, we, we just need to kind of get back to the grassroots now in Kilkenny and start building again from from the ground up. And um, I think that's what we're... we're that's what they're they're planning on doing. You know, they they have that plan in place to go to go forward, and you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing the seeing the results of that. Uh, Richie, I know it's a kind of a difficult one for you to comment on because you obviously played under Brian for years. But where do you stand on where Kilkenny are now uh, going into 2022? Um, some people saying maybe that there was maybe change needed at the top, particularly when you see Henry maybe going to Galway. That's only natural for people to. I uh, suppose want him to be maybe involved with Kilkenny. Where do you stand on where Kilkenny are at senior level? Are are Kilkenny realistic All Ireland contenders at the moment? Um, like I suppose at, at this moment in time, I I wouldn't say they are. Um, but in saying that, I suppose they've been very very close to getting to an All Ireland final in the last two seasons. You know, just I suppose coming up short against Watford. Um, last year, and then I suppose this year against Cork, you know they they put again put themselves in a position to to win that game. So, you know I I do think that the the personnel is there. Um, I suppose my big thing would be the just the style of play, maybe. Um, you know tactically, you know we've maybe got it wrong in in both those semi finals against Watford and Cork when when the game has kind of really been in the melting pot. And I think that's I think that's where maybe Brian has to. I suppose reinvent the wheel a bit in Kilkenny, um, and you know I've no doubt that he he will he will certainly try, um, and he will be looking at next season and looking at next year, and you know I suppose in Kilkenny every night every day you go back or every year you go back training your your end goal is to win an All Ireland, and you know that's not going to be any different this year when when he gets the squad back together, but um, I, I just think at this moment in time we're we're probably in the chase and pack as as a lot of other teams are at the moment with 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 the Limericks of this world and it's to it's how we find a way of getting back to the top table um, is going to be very very interesting over the next couple of seasons and I suppose that that will all start in probably four to six weeks time when when preseason starts up again and you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll soon know kind of come early February when or whenever the league kind of kicks off you know where where we're at and. Um, I suppose it's it's like no it's like everyone else we're 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 looking at Limerick at the top table at the moment and it's just about trying to get back there now and how we do it I think there has to be a lot of heads put together in Kilkenny and putting a plan in place and if that means you know not not getting results maybe for the next four or five six years so be it uh, because that's what Limerick have done that's what Cork have done and they're now starting to to really see the the results of that. 
what you mentioned about grassroots there, I suppose, like you or what you or yourself, Cha, Richie, TJ were, uh, you know, among a big group of lads that came through a conveyor belt of minor winning teams, under 21 winning teams, and there was always an influx of lads coming in. Whereas, I suppose, the last couple of years of underage have been disappointing. The minors won Leinster, all right, but we're beaten. Uh, they were beaten by Cork, I think, in the All Ireland semi final. The twenties have been beaten in Leinster the last couple of years, so I suppose that that that's a key part to it as well. Um, just on Henry going to Galway, was that surprising? Did that surprise you? Um, I think you surprised a lot um, of people anyway. Surprised, I suppose. Galway was probably the surprise. I, I I'd imagine like Henry stepping into inter county management, absolutely not. You know, it, it was only it was the next step for him. Um, you know, and I, I'd no doubt that he was going to make it in the next year or two. And you know, you, you probably the likes of a Wexford job or a Dublin job, you know, were kind of being touted around Kilkenny, maybe as as would be a good fit for him to begin. But I suppose, look, Galway, Galway have really, really, you know, pulled the rabbit out of the hat here, in my opinion, because you know, I would have loved to have seen Henry maybe getting involved at maybe minor and under twenty one level with Kilkenny, maybe in the last couple of seasons even, and kind of have that stepping stone to to the senior job in, in a couple of years or whenever that may be. But I certainly think, you know, Kilkenny have missed missed um you know missed a step or missed a beat there in in kind of letting Henry slip through the fingers. And unfortunately that's the way it is. And you know he's going to make the long trek across to, to Galway for the next three seasons. But um you know I, I think there's there's serious talent in Galway. Like we've seen that over the years. And I, I suppose I've said it myself in the last couple of seasons, if there's anyone more equipped to to deal with this current Limerick team, it, it it is it is a Galway, um you know, and it's it's about getting the the right set of players, um you know, and both phys, phys, physically and skillfully, Galway have it all, and they've won so many underage, you know, minor All Irelands, under twenty All Irelands, you know, it's just a matter of bringing these guys to the next level, and you know, I think Henry will do that, and I think he'll he'll scour Galway, you know, all over to try and get get a couple of new players and bring in a couple of new players into that setup. And if he does, and I suppose the big the big question is whether he gets Joe back for another season or not. But um, I'm sure we'll 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 hear about that in the coming weeks. What what would be your your own thoughts on that? You're obviously involved in management now. I know you were you were uh, with with the Offaly Camogie team, and you were with you're with Carrick Shock as well. Would uh, is that a conversation that you would have? And do you think he'll have it? Do you think he'll be able to hold so back? Without a doubt, it's a conversation that he'll have. Um, you know, is it a conversation that I'd be, I'd be kind of, you know, putting everything on, getting him back, you know, to to be successful? Not so sure, but I, I'd certainly have the conversation. I'd sit down and I, I, I firmly put the ball in Joe's court. You know, the door is wide open for him if he wants to come back. But again, Henry's a kind of a guy that you know is not just going to bring the guy back on sentiment. He's going to have to work hard. He's going to have to come back in great shape. Um, you know, I know he's been plagued with injuries over the last couple of seasons, and and that's maybe why he he decided to to call it a day. But definitely, I, I it, it's a conversation I'd have. But as I said, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't make it the be all and end all for Galway hurling. And you know, I don't think Henry will. I think he'll give him the option. He'll he'll leave the ball in his court, and whatever he decides, he'll he'll be welcomed back into the fold. But I don't I don't see it being you know a, a huge thing for Henry when he when he took the job. It's the sort of thing, it'd be a massive bonus if he came back. But as you say, I don't yeah. think he'd put yeah. his eggs in, all in that basket. Um, Absolutely. Just a quick one on, your, on yourself, Richie. Um, obviously, like, are, are you able to play at all now? I know you had, you had serious knee trouble. That's obviously why you had to pull away. I remember you, you played uh, you played a couple of minutes in Crow Park didn't you, in the intermediate final, the Ireland Club intermediate yeah. final a couple yeah. of years ago. What's your, what's your kind of status now? Well, no, I suppose, look, 2017 was the last year that I... I um, I suppose played for for the club Kerry Shock Bernie. Um, we won the intermediate club that year, and we I hurled the the senior championship here in Kilkenny that year, and and just I suppose called it a day after that. Um, now look, I have um, I've made one or two kind of appearances on goal for junior teams in the club in the last kind of year or two because we're we're, we're short on numbers. But um, no, at this moment in time, I'm I'm involved in management. I've been managing the our own intermediate team for the last two seasons, and. Um, I suppose look that's where I suppose that's where my future in GA stands if 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 I continue to do it. But from from a playing point of view, I I've stepped away and look, it's for more a a kind of standard of life, quality of life reason than not wanting to play because believe me, I'd I'd love to be still going. Um, you know, with the club in particular. But unfortunately, 
physically the the legs or the knees just won't allow it. But um, I suppose as I said, I just need to look after look after number one, and um, I suppose hopefully won't be looking down the barrel of a knee replacement anytime soon. Good, uh, hopefully not. I, I can speak from everyone and say that we'd all love to see you playing. I, I didn't enjoy chasing after you when, 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 you, <laughs> when you were on the pitch. Um, I remember, yeah, I picked up a few yellow cards down through the years for wild swipes and drags <laughs> and different things like that. Just a quick question from Paul Akeeshan there, Richie. You just said, any young lad in particular in, in KK we should be keeping an eye out for possibly a free taker to take over when TJ goes, whenever that is. Is there anyone in particular maybe that stood out for you in that kind of respect that could be, you know, a big talisman, particularly on the freeze over the next couple of years? Um, God, like, that's that's a very good question. Um, I suppose think, thinking back through the, the, the senior clubs and intermediate clubs, Bernie, there's not, there's not really a standout. Um, you know, there's a young Talis from, from the Liz Downey Club here in Kilkenny, a very, very good free taker. I've seen him on occasions. Um, Alan Murphy, obviously from Glenmore, there in the intermediate county final on Sunday, is, is a very, very good free taker as well. Um, but really, no, like I suppose the free takers the last couple of years has been TJ, maybe Richie Hogan thrown in there as well. So I suppose it is something that you know Kilkenny will have to look for and look at in the coming seasons because you know TJ thirty four going on thirty five. I'm not sure how many more seasons are, are left in the legs at inter county level. So yeah. At the moment, Owen Gilfoyle, maybe from, from James Stevens, he took him for the under-20s last year, is another guy maybe in the mix. Um, but there's no real standout at the moment within within the Kilkenny Championships. No, that's great. No, Richie, thanks a million for coming on. I appreciate that. Some great insights on the Kilkenny final. And uh, I hope the, uh, the coaching career is long and prosperous over the next couple of years. Cheers. Thanks a million, Bernie. Thanks, Richie. I think we have uh, Finton. Uh, I think we have Finton from the forty-two ready to go, and we sure do. Finton, thanks a million for joining us. Fernie, how's the form? All good. Yeah, I know you were. Uh, you're a proud Cork man, and you were down in what you call the home of hurling, Parky Cueve, over the weekend. Uh, two big senior hurling semi-finals. Uh, just go through the scores here quickly. Middleton four twenty-two, Black Rock three three nineteen. And Glen Rovers, 117, Sarsfield's 18 points. So that sets up Middleton, Middleton versus Glen Rovers uh, in the county final. Uh, just a quick word on Middleton. That probably was deemed a surprise coming into it. Um, the Rockies are obviously reigning champions. Just a, a bit of background on that. I know Conor Leham was very good. Conor Bosang as well. Luke O'Farrell uh, was prominent as well. Just your thoughts on that game. It was a, a big upset. Uh, yeah, but it probably was because the Cockers are the champions and Middleton's form had just been a bit iffy. Uh, the two things about it was they were already qualified from the group and they played their last group game against Sarsfields. Uh, the winners of that game were going to go directly into the semi-finals and it would have been expected to be quite close, but Middleton lost by 10 points. So the kind of scale and size of that defeat was a bit of a surprise. Um, and then they had their work cut out in the quarterfinal against Aaron Zone. Aaron Zone team had 14 men for a lot of the game. Uh, they won by four points in the end. Um, so just there was probably a bit of a question mark over their form heading into the game. The talent in the team is unquestionable, really, you know, in terms of the amount of players who've had county experience at different levels. And obviously they have a top class coach in Ben O'Connor over them, you know, who's had such such a glittering playing career and had great success with Charleville as well, uh, previously kind of intermediate level in his coaching. Um, but they just really, really caught fire on the day, you know. Um you know, the first half was kind of the the score taking was really kind of the big feature. It was a very very open game now, to be honest. You know, it was one fourteen to one eleven and a half, I think, which considering it's only thirty minutes of hurling, um, you know, at club level for the first Sunday in November, you know, it's 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 very very high scoring. Um, the kind of level of points were served up, but in the third quarter, I suppose you could see all the maximum fans coaching. They just isolated both Sang and Luca Farrell inside. The deliveries were absolutely brilliant. The movement of the attack, they just, Middleton, or Blackrock couldn't cope with it. And Middleton got three goals in that third quarter. Now, Blackrock got one in the third quarter as well. It was a brilliant effort from Neil Cashman, the court defender. But suddenly, from a three point game uh, at half time, the gap was nine points by the water break. And Middleton just shot up shot from there on. They did concede another goal, but essentially the damage was done. And, you know, with 422, that's the kind of eye catching thing about the scoring. Um, Interesting, I suppose, is that it, it was kind of the former core players kind of caught the eye in terms of Luca Farrell won one, Conor Dehan 10 points. And I guess, you know, it kind of maybe raises the question about the benefits of a club having a guy to themselves the whole year round. You know, um, you know, Lehan, obviously, there was changes in the core panel uh, at the end of 2020 and he was let go. Um, he's been made captain of Middleton this year. They won the senior hurling league. 
you know, he really did just lead the way yesterday. He got 10 points. And if anyone who's watching Cork over the last couple of years or at county level, it was kind of a typical kind of Lee Hand display. Like he kicked, he hit two outrageous points in the first half, one from either wing right on the sideline and still managed to put them over, you know. So he just has that kind of ability. And then they just have loads of other guys that have just played minor under 20 hurling. Um, like they were in the county final three years ago. So I suppose I guess it's not a huge surprise, but given their form up to yesterday, uh, it was a big statement, especially against the reigning champions. Definitely, yeah. You just mentioned about Niall Cashman's goal, uh, a brilliant Maisie run. I, I should have mentioned it earlier about Brian Butler's goal for Bally Hale, a corner back coming forward. Um, I could, I'd love to say I did that even in training someday, but I never have. So it's a fair statement for a corner back to do that. Cashman's goal was like that as well. It was a real kind of solo effort. But uh, j- just on Middleton, uh, Finton, I think there's a lot of merits to what you said there. Having you know, you know, a county players maybe not just coming back in at the end of a hard season with the county and maybe maybe been fatigued or been low in confidence or a bit down in the mouth a bit. Um, he's had, Ben O'Connor has had Lahan to himself all year and same with maybe Luke O'Farrell in the last couple of years. And they look like men possessed. Like Lehan is in phenomenal, Nick. He's always been in great shape, but he's bouncing. And like they're a dangerous prospect going into the final. Absolutely full of beans like they are now. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things as well is that you know, sometimes the guys retire from inter-county, they have a long, long career and they might be coming back to the club in kind of their mid-30s. Like, Lehan's 29 and O'Farrell is 31 as far as um, I think I'm correct in saying that. So, like, these are guys kind of still in really, really good shape, not to make any miles on the clock, um, still have really, really good standard forwards, you know. And just the way they use them is really good. Like, Lehan's kind of floats around the half-forward line, he can kind of pop up centre and wing. Black Rock are hard to pin him down at times. Uh, he kind of hit, a f- you know, he hit a few wides in the second half, but I mean, he's just on the ball so much and hit a- hit the last point of the game. And then a fire inside him, and he only scored one one, but he probably definitely should have got at least another goal uh, in the second half. He made a brilliant catch, and he's just always kind of dangerous. And then Bo Sang next time, so probably wouldn't be as known uh, to many people. Like he wouldn't play Cork underage or anything, but just a very very good young club player of the last couple of years. But like even just all over their team, you know, I mean, like Tommy O'Connell, the centre back, he won an All Ireland the twenty medal of Cork this year. Sean O'Leary Hayes being back like he was on the Cork senior panel. You know, there's just a lot of kind of strength there. And then they have obviously those uh, those couple of guys up front. But I mean, like they haven't won a county since 2013. Uh, given the amount of kind of underage talent they've had, that's probably been a disappointment for them that they haven't added to that county. They did get to the final in 2018. Um, but like I think the manager or one of the selectors was interviewed afterwards and he kind of said, look, we've been kind of waiting for performance to produce all year in terms of goal scoring and all that. Just felt like yesterday, because in that third quarter, it really, really clicked with the three goals, and they could have added another couple in the final quarter. And you know, Blackrock was like kept battling away till the end, but it was kind of telling. Like Alan Connolly only got one point from play. He's really their kind of go-to yeah. guy up front. Robbie Cotter, people might be familiar with him. He was on the other twenty team, the one the All Ireland in uh, in August as well. He got two points of play in the first five minutes, but didn't score from play after that. So like, fairness, Middleton did a really, really good job of kind of tying them down. But like Connolly's been getting big goals for Blackrock the last couple of rounds, and he was a big player when they won the county last year. And obviously, he is you know the Cork senior forward, so it was just interesting that kind of contrast um, in what was an incredibly high scoring game, you know, very, very open and, and for a very, very different type of game to the second game, you know, uh, just you know, a bit loose, a lot of really kind of a lot of space kind of created in the attacks, whereas the second game was a far more physical contest, I thought. As John O'Sullivan said here, he said maybe it shouldn't really be a massive surprise at Middleton. They have a team full of lads who play with Cork at either senior and level, it's either senior level or at underage. That's a fair point. Uh, ML eighty nine Cork Championship is very entertaining and high scoring. The level of defending is probably uh, a level below a lot of other counties. Probably has a lot to do with the poor record of Cork clubs in Munster. Yeah, there's definitely no problem putting up high scores. But I suppose they're going to concede high scores then at the other end too. Niall Fogarty, I was at the Cork semis. Blackrock very poor in an open game. Glenn very, were very good in a much better game. Sars will be disappointed they couldn't get quality ball into dangerous forwards. Um, and Conor Heaney just said Tommy O'Connell was outstanding with, with his deliveries uh, his deliveries inside yesterday. Fairness with a Ben O'Connor side, uh, they're always going to be very sympathetic to the forwards, you'd imagine, the ball coming in. Do they play a running style at all, like what Newtown used to play? Or is it, um, like, do they play, would they carry the ball an awful lot like Newtown and even Cork did? Not, not, not it very, very noticeably, to be honest. A lot of it was seemed to be about kind of isolating both signing off Ireland's side. At that point, about O'Connell is very interesting and very, and very worth point making because he would have played a lot of his career kind of midfield or wing forward. Cormac Walsh is being back with a big wing forward for Middleton, but they both have them in the half back line now. 
And I think it's more aimed at maybe not so much their their defending, but just their absolute use of the ball. Like O'Connell had an absolutely brilliant point in the first half where he got the ball because he's so comfortable on it and so comfortable carrying it forward. You know, he picked off his score when he kind of surged into space, but he's also able to kind of put really, really kind of good balls inside. And then they have other guys, maybe like O'Leary Hayes um, or Luke Dineen for back, you know, kind of maybe a bit more kind of specialist um, defenders, you know, kind of maybe you're used to playing the position. So that is an interesting kind of, I suppose, little tweak that they've kind of made um, to their team this year. Um, like obviously O'Connell is still uh, very, very young, but yeah, I mean, look all across their team. I mean, like their keeper, Brian Saunderson, he was a Cork minor keeper a couple of years ago. You know, you could you could go through it. And I suppose that's the level you kind of need to be at these days. Um, when you get to this stage, like, you know, that need kind of, it seems like 10 or 11 fellas have to kind of some kind of county experience. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's a massive boost for them. Like BlackRock would be kind of disappointed because like they lost their first group game. It looked like they kind of got it together in the rest of the group stages and the way they beat Douglas in the quarterfinal. Um, but just when that kind of push came in the third quarter yesterday, they just didn't really have a response and they were just kind of left far too open um, at the back. And, you know, it was all about just kind of closing up the game and kind of shutting up shots came for Middleton yesterday. But um, for Ben O'Connor, like, it's brilliant. I mean, like, it would be a real kind of achievement in his coaching career, I think, if he wins this now, because like that'll be premier to meet a hurling and a senior hurling county with two different clubs. You know, the expectation in Cork will be, he seems to be ticking all the boxes in terms of kind of moving up to the county ranks at underage level or, or whatever. Um, in the future, but um, you know, definitely if he can add this, you know, to the work he's done previously with Charbel, um, it kind of says a lot about you know his uh, his kind of coaching acumen going forward. Yeah, there's a, Ben O'Connor is one of many, uh, one of many really good coaches coming through Cork. There's definitely no shortage of them anyway. Just an interesting point on O'Connell you made there, and I suppose I was thinking of Limerick when you said it. If you look at like Declan Hannan going back centre back, he's a, f- a forward. His deliveries are one of the most important aspects of his game. Uh, Kyle Hayes going back wing back. Barry Nash going back cornerback, they're all kind of natural forwards going back into defence and, you know, they're always going to favour the forward, with, if at all possible, with ball coming in. Um, just on, on the Glen then, um, I know you were you had an awful lot of admiration, admiration as we all do, but Patrick Horgan's performance yesterday, again, he's just, he just, his ability to keep delivering and delivering over the last couple of years is something else. He's a man for every season and he, he was at it again yesterday for the Glen. Yeah, he was. And I guess the backdrop to this was really interesting in the sense that he only became available to play in the game uh, during the week um, because his, he had been sent off, I suppose, we would know he was sent off in the quarterfinal against the McKilly, um in the first half of that match. Uh, McKilly appe- or sorry, Glenn Rovers appealed the suspension and it was overturned uh, during the week. Um, and then he was free to play yesterday. And, you know, he was kind of it kind of maybe slow start. I mean, it was eight points to seven in favor of Sarsfields in the first half, but like he really just really caught fire in the second half. Uh, like his goal came just after half time, and that was a real kind of decisive moment in the game. And at various stages during the second half, they were looking at isolation inside. Um, I mean, Sarsfield started with like William Carney marking him towards the end of it, it was Connor O'Sullivan. But again, this goes back to maybe something we touched on as regards to the first game, like the quality of the deliveries coming in were superb, especially from the Downey brothers. Uh, Robert and Owen and then Hogan just availed of them you know once he got in front <clears throat> and like it was just really really good I suppose intelligent play for Glenn in the second half whereas the first half the ball was kind of raining down on top of Hogan but the amount of deliveries in the second half that would basically hop maybe just two yards in front of him absolutely perfect for a corner forward in fairness the cornerback is a bit on a hiding to nothing then you know because he can shoot so comfortably off left and right but I just thought it was interesting I mean look the whole like he's, he's Cork's most kind of prominent hurling name at the moment He's the Glen Rovers most prominent hurling name. Everything's looking at him yesterday. Sarsfield's obviously thinking about him as their kind of main strategy, how to stop him. <clears throat> but just the fact that he delivered. I mean, even in a kind of a seesaw second half, Sarsfield went ahead 18 to 114, and then Horgan scores the last three points of the game. The two of those were frees, but he was fouled for one of them himself. And the second free was right over on the touchline, and he and he nailed it. Um, and then he got the last point to kind of insurance score, so 111. Um, and I just like, Glen was really interesting in the sense that you know, he is the kind of main man. After that, like, there's just a lot of really kind of hard-working guys. The Downies have kind of come very, very strong as regards defensive options for them. If you look at the team that would have won counties 2015-16, how that's kind of changed. And then the other one, then, in fairness to him, is Simon Kennefick, who would be, uh, he's the grandson of Christy Ring. You know, he'd be, he's kind of a very useful foil alongside Horgan. He got two points in play again yesterday. He got the winning point in the quarterfinal. I think he's 21-22. He was fouled for a couple of the frees. So that is kind of useful. But a lot of the game was basically all about, I suppose, how the Glen could serve as Horgan and just 
you know, I presume it was something they looked at at halftime because it was just noticeable how the quality of the ball coming in the second half was far better. And the movement and fairness of the forwards to kind of drift out a bit more rather than leaving it bunched um, the way it had been in the first half. And there was a bit of a contrast with that, with the way Sars was in the second half. They didn't use the ball as well. Like their main tactic in the first half essentially was Jack O'Connor at getting him and exploiting his pace. Um, and I don't know if anyone watched any, any bit of the live stream, but like it was pretty much similar to, I suppose, the goal he got against Kilkenny this year. Some of the runs he took on, like he absolutely left Robert Downey in his wake a couple of times, got four points in play in the first half. But they've kind of played him outside in the wing forward in the first half, whereas then they kind of stuck him inside full forward in the second half. And I think that suited Steve McDonald far better and the ball was raining down on top of him. And they just couldn't really kind of get him into the game enough. I mean, obviously, they very fine margins. I mean, they were ahead by a point. Um, with famous left, and it was level heading into injury time, but I think the Glen just kind of that kind of heart and fight did did kind of uh, stand to them in good stead in the second half. And obviously, yeah, look, you have a guy like Horgan, I suppose you just got to maximize the the talents, don't you? And you kind of build your game yeah. on around them. And in fairness, the Glen did that very successfully. Uh, Connor Heaney just said, kind of backing up your point there, just that Jack O'Connor was starved the ball in the second half yesterday. Sars will be good with the talent that they have not to make the county final, without a doubt. Um, Shane Power, I wouldn't fancy either Middleton or the Glen in Munster, whichever team wins the final. I think both would be, uh, I think both would put up a good fight against whatever club they'll mm-hmm. face, but I don't think they would win. Uh, the Glen were obviously in a Munster final a couple of years ago uh, when they were beaten by Ballet, I think it was. Um, Shane Power has in there. Also, do you think Simon Kennefick should get a senior call up for Cork? I remember watching him in a final or semi-final two years ago for the Glen, and he was absolutely outstanding. Uh, what say you, Finton? Well, like he was on the other twenty team that contested the All Ireland, the Tip would have beaten him. You know, the the twenty nineteen game it was. You know, when Tip got like four or five goals early on, so he was on that team. So I suppose the next step is, you know, to maybe have a look at him for senior. And in fairness, look at club level, he has been quite useful. Um, <clears throat> like I said, when Horgan got sent off in the quarter final, he was the guy that stood up and he hit the two points that basically won them the game. And yesterday, then, like he just just always chips in every day you know and like he gets a couple of points or he wins a couple of frees um and he's kind of a useful kind of foil um alongside him for Horgan. um on that club point yeah that is that is interest, interesting and it is something i suppose spoken to a lot about cork record has been really really poor in months or in the last couple of years uh the way the draw works is that cork are away to kill out the champions in the semi-final this year and then you'll have tip claire Morford on the other side of it you know and i guess it's probably the debate like you know is it a good is it a good sign for a county to have someone like say in water body gunner beating everyone that comes before them being an absolutely outstanding club team or is it a better situation cork and claire will strike me maybe is a bit similar you know very very competitive kind of seven or eight teams have been in the finals over the last seven or eight years i think there's maybe arguments for both both sides of it like you know but one thing that has cork sides haven't been able to do well over the last couple of years is when mckilly won the three in a row Obviously, they couldn't go forward to Munster, but on each occasion, the club team that they beat didn't win the first round. The Munster didn't make any impression on Munster. Really, they came closest to actually beat Ballygunner to two points, but that psychological thing of losing a county final and then having to pick yourself up for a Munster club game, clearly it just didn't really work for a couple of them. I mean, I remember Dr. Croke, I think it was in 06 or 07, managed to do it, and they actually got all the way to the all Ireland club final. But it must be a hard thing for guys at this point of losing it to try and kind of pick yourself back up. Um, and they just haven't been able to manage it. So maybe it might be a better situation this year. Um, whoever wins will obviously be club champions and will have, I think they'll have two, two, three weeks to prepare because um, the finals out for the 21st. Maybe that might put them in better state and maybe they might really have a better crack off once or this year as a, as a result of that. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, remember, the Stacks ended up going into Munster uh, two or three years ago after they'd been beaten in a semi final, I think, and they were beaten, I think it was 214 to five. I think it was by, by Nemo. Uh, Connie Shamrocks went on and won the All-Ireland Junior, having been beaten by O'Loughlin second team in the Kilkenny Junior final. And so they were the reigning All-Ireland Junior Club champions, but they weren't the reigning Kilkenny Junior Club champions. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Ve- it's very, very rare. Um, very, very rare anything like that happens. Just the last point on the Glen, um, what you mentioned about having a load of really hard-working players. I love when lads, some, maybe some lads, and I'm not saying this is necessarily the case with the Glen, but when some lads maybe realise what they're good at and realise their limitations and will do everything possible to service their star man and he's obviously going to take the limelight most of the time, but that is a great sign of uh, togetherness I'd say within a club that lads will just willingly give up themselves, do all the donkey work for maybe somebody else to shine on a given day. Yeah, and you can see that like a couple of guys that maybe people wouldn't be as familiar with, like David Dooling, cornerback, and David Noon in midfield. And they're just the epitome of that. Like, you know, one is your kind of hardworking cornerback, and the other is the midfielder, 
he's just full of energy, just gets around the pitch a lot. He's still involved from 15, 16. And in fairness, like just the Glen, they've just had that kind of mentality, and I just they just strike me as a club that really maximizing what they have at their disposal. Now, in fairness, like like they were on the court kind of minor title a couple of weeks ago, so there is obviously young talent coming through. And even like you look at their management team, like the four selectors were all guys who played in the 15, 16 finals. Graham Callan, who would have played Cork Senior, might be familiar to some people, you know. So that's the kind of new management team now. So it just seems that kind of you know, the virtues that a lot of these guys would have had as players, some of these selectors, those kind of workers around the middle, they seem to be imparting to them. You obviously have Horgan, and in fairness, I do think the two Downey brothers have been a big addition for them in terms of Robert is playing centre back. Um, like in the last minute, Sarsfield's down by two points. The ball, there was basically a you know, about 70 yard clearance when the fence came in, packed goal mouth about, the, about say, 13 yards out, and it was down. He caught the ball and came out with it and put it upfield. And then his younger brother, Owen, who had been on the under 20 this year, he's left half back, just got him on a lot of ball. And like I was saying, just putting those kind of d- deliveries to um, deliveries to Horgan. So, you know, in both cases, from Sarsfield's point, it probably it is worth stressing like there was a the best side in the group stages. Uh, probably a bit of a discussion in Cork now. The way the system works is it a penalty to be the best group team? Yeah. So Sarsfield didn't have a game in maybe three or four weeks, I think. And you'd also argue how maybe worth it to go on a full throttle in that game because they're both true. The Glen had that quarter final against the McKinney doing by a point. They won their last group game, group game against the Chandra by a point to stay in the championship. You know, in a fight game of fine margins that was settled by two points, did that battle hearted thing come against them? You know, that is that is possibly a debate. Like, but um, yeah, I I think for, you know as one of the commenters said there earlier, like for all the talent that they have, and I mentioned the two players that Middleton have, Saracens will be the same guys at various levels. Um, like they haven't been in a final out since fifteen, and they haven't won one since fourteen. Again, for a club of kind of their standards and their talent, that's a pretty disappointing statistic, you know. No, definitely, without a doubt. Uh, the Shellminator, uh, in with a comment, Cork are coming for sure. Keep up the standard and they may lose a few more finals, <laughs> finals this year. Um, very, uh, I'd say there's a bit of tip, tongue-in-cheek there, <laughs> in fairness to him. Um, uh, uh, Fenton, you're obviously uh, very in tune with what's going on in Cork and there were some other good stories outside of the senior championship and uh, Canturk was definitely one over the weekend anyway. Yeah, so I suppose just to, but I suppose kind of making a two Cork heavy a focus, like the core system has kind of changed over the last couple of years and they've kind of split it into various grades of other teams um probably kind of maybe make it a bit hard to follow so like you premier senior and then you've senior a but i just think it's re-energized the championships a lot better i mean i know tipperary did something similar and i think that's worked for them as well having the shameless O'Reen as the second tier senior competition so you just don't have kind of lopsided games at the top level but Cantor won the senior a uh semi-final on saturday night 423 to 26 points uh you know, they were down, uh, Paul Walsh, the core footballer, got sent off uh, midway through the second half and they were losing 20 points to 13 at the water break. But they basically just managed to drag themselves back into it. Like, um, like there was one one brilliant moment, actually, if, if uh, I don't actually think this game was live streamed, but basically, um, Aidan Walsh basically kept the ball in play. It was very, it was shades of the Dermot O'Connor Mayo v Dublin effort uh, this year. But basically, by managing to do that, that they, it led to the goal. They kind of got Cantor back into contention. Then his cousin Ryan Walsh came from wing back, scored an absolutely brilliant goal, and then they just took over an extra time and um, got another couple of goals. But probably have a lot of names people will be familiar with. You know, obviously Aidan Walsh, Darkon McLaughlin, uh, Brian O'Sullivan was on the Cork in the twenties this year, and just a word on, like on their manager, the coach Frank Flannery. You know, who would have coached Owler to win the uh, to win the extra title, and obviously would have I think Westmead hurlers as well. And you know, he's been kind of involved with different clubs, and I think he was a Waterford sector when you're under Derek McGrath. You know, he just seems to kind of work well in various kind of places that he goes, you know, so... Um, yeah, Frank's kind of record is absolutely that. outstanding, yeah. He he usually yeah, has Sean O'Donnell coach, yeah. with him as, as stats man. The Limerick man is usually with him. I'm not too sure if he was with him in no, Kentucky, but... You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. He, has it. he has him with him. He's done, uh, he's done on the match programme, like, you know, so, like, Ronan Kern would have been over Kentucky last year and then he went back to Finbars, so then uh, they got in flying Flannery and um, definitely a brilliant comeback for them. So, uh, they'll be in the final now against Ford and Eels and Brick Rovers and then whoever wins that then gets up to the top level of, uh, of Premier Senior. Speaking of comebacks, uh, Mark Keane, the goal scoring hero, probably nearly, Jesus, nearly, uh, it's nearly this day, 12 or twelve months mm. ago, I'd say. He was at it again last weekend, but this time with the small ball. Yeah, I just thought this was an interesting one because we've seen it over the weekend in football. You know, you see Conor Glass, he's obviously got full-time now, you know, he helps his club with a very football title. Uh, Kieran Byrne, I saw, was playing the loud football final. I think his club is the first time in it, but Keane just struck me as interesting, you know, like 
he's still a current AFL player. All the, I suppose, controversy maybe about four or five years ago when AFL players were home, would they be allowed to play? And obviously it was all to do with football, but he's playing football uh, for Mitchellstown since he's been home at the moment. They're still in the football championship intermediate. And then he plays junior hurling for Bally Gilman, which would be kind of like the sister club. Um, and I suppose maybe people wouldn't be as familiar with it, but basically the Cork under 20 team won the other in this year. Keane would have been part of that setup under 15, 16. So say Tommy O'Connell, we mentioned earlier, that you'd be a contemporary of his be known as a kind of a very good hurler so they basically won their divisional section they're now in a county semi-final so um just think it's quite interesting like i suppose trying to think of a comparison um i suppose the halpines that time i think maybe when they came home uh did they come home the first year Santa exactly in the paid hurling but obviously usually we're used to guys coming home from the afl in the off season like you know zach Huey, port leash mark o'connor dingle a couple of times and then played football but it's interesting that keen is obviously playing both uh at the moment and uh Still on course for two county medals, on you at, the, at I, different age groups. I'd say Colin O'Reardon has done a lot of AFL uh, players that want to play GA a service by coming back and win a monster and seeing that you can get through games uh, without maybe injuries and things like that. And a lot of other uh, lads are going to their clubs and saying, "Listen, I'd be happier if I can play this game yeah. and give back to my club." Um, I, I, another, I, I think it was yeah. your, um, I think your colleague there, Shane Colin Keys, in an interview with Mark O'Connor a couple of weeks ago, and he made the point that. The first time he came home, do you remember that time he came home, played basically without their permission? He kind of said, I didn't do a good job of explaining what it was about. But since then, I have. And I think he would have been allowed to play for Dingle this year, only he was injured. And I I think that's happened across the board. I think the, maybe the, the relationship has been explained a bit better. And like the O'Riordan thing, obviously, is an example of something that probably has shown, you know, like Keenan and obviously said to Collingwood, look, this is what's going on with Sydney Swans. And maybe the AFL club is just kind of, I suppose, going that extra mile to try and keep these guys happy um at the moment but it is interesting how it's kind of changed from a few years ago where it seemed to be you know almost blacklisted like you know you definitely want to load play when you came home for those uh for these couple of months at this time of year yeah Connor mckenna got in trouble i think with essendon as well but i think yeah, uh, that's true. They, yeah, yeah. They, they were happy just to get him back and back playing for that limited uh amount of time that they did just uh one other really nice story uh in cork finton and that's uh on on sullivan you might just give a, a bit of background to this this is a phenomenal story real feel good story yeah, I just said it, I, I'd bring this one up. So basically, Sarsfield's second team were in the county intermediate semi-final on Friday night, and they won it. And Owen O'Sullivan scored 1-5 for them. Uh, he might be a familiar to people in Cork. He'd be Conor O'Sullivan, the former Cork senior's younger brother. He played Cork minor 21, played for Sarsfield's senior, but he did a brilliant interview last year uh, with Larry Ryan in the examiner. Uh, it would have been May 2020. You can check it out online. We basically just talked about his various... I suppose cancer struggles that he's had over the last uh, five or six years and he's been kind of in and out of the hospital kind of treated on different occasions but he's constantly been getting back playing hurling basically um he's played at senior level for starts in the county finals he'd be known as a very very good forward and still coming back and playing for his club section team and scored one five the only go- goal of the game uh i think got three four three so he's obviously kind of taking on that responsibility um and finally kind of had read up his last year just a guy with an absolutely amazing attitude um coming back playing and obviously he's got a side into a, into a county final now in a, a couple of weeks uh their second side and you know i think the scoreline was 115 to 15 points against mayfields and he scored 15 so i think that tells its own story in terms of a, a big scoring contribution for forward yeah but i just think it's, it's a really, really kind of nice story and fair play to him no that's a great story indeed uh just a reminder we're, we're brought to you today by uh Arga retro you can get this leash replica jersey or any other the lovely collection coming up to christmas if you type in our game you get 15 percent off just uh, the Offaly semi-finals, which um, unfortunately I was not part of. I would love to have been part of them, but I wasn't. I was down at Kuleri and Shinron in Burr on Saturday. Kuleri 3-13, Shinron 16 And yesterday, uh, Rhinus hung on to beat Kilkarma Kalati. was 118 to 20 points. Just a couple of words on Kuleri and Shinron. Uh, that was in St. Brendan's Park on, on Saturday. Kuleri, having been written off probably after last year's performance, have completely turned around again and regenerated uh, another team they're they're an amazing club really i have to say um they looked they looked dead and buried last year after coming back uh, brian culbert from clary six mile bridge he's after coming in there he's after uh putting in a few young players the likes of shane ryan garold mccormick uh, keen burke who got a goal at the weekend uh and they've just they obviously have that mix of youth and they have the mix of experience brian carroll was brilliant in the first half in particular, he had a brilliant catch for a goal uh, and was very, very good in the freeze. Missed one in the second half, but was, was, was solid on them throughout. Kevin Connolly stood up then for them in the second half. Um, Shinron kind of left themselves too much to do. They were nine behind 
Uh, they got it back to three with Jason Sampson and Adrian Cleary getting on a lot of ball and getting scores, but they weren't able to get it any closer than that. Couldn't really threaten the goal. So Coleri are chasing their 32nd county title when they play Rhinus in two weeks' time. Uh, Rhinus, for what I think it was 117 to 13 up with five minutes to play, and Kilcormack absolutely threw the kitchen sink at them, and they were just holding on at the end. And just an interesting little side story, uh, Dermot Horn, who uh, would have played for Offaly back in the day, son of Offaly captain Parik, who captain Offaly to the first I learned in 81, he returned from the US for, this is the third year in a row, he's turned for, uh, come back from the US for the knockout stages. And he seems to be their lucky charm. He's come on and got big points off the bench. He came on and got two in the county final in 19. I think he came on for 20 minutes in last year's final again and was influential. He came on right at the very end yesterday and he'd probably play a more influential role in the final. But that's a really interesting one. Rhinus going for three in a row against the Kuleri, uh, Kuleri team who are top of the roll of honour with 32. Just a word on uh, Stephen Corcoran, the goalie for Kuleri. He put over two huge frees uh, when they really, really needed them at the end uh, just to see them over the line. And just a word on my own club, uh, Borough won the intermediate title yesterday. So we were going gone up senior B now, beat Shamrocks by a point. Unfortunately, our junior Bs were beaten in the final. Uh, we were seven up with five to play and Carrick scored 2-2 two, two without response. Our parish rivals, um, even though they're the far side of the border in Tipperary, they played a hurling and awfully. So that was a bit of a that was a bit of a sickener. But um at least we won the intermediate after. Um just quickly jump on to Galway semi final. I know you saw just, Clar- just, yeah. just, just to begin on the offfield, just wondering so yeah. like, so Ken Hogan obviously is coaching Rhinos against Kulderi yeah. they took for the Ireland Club final. Like, have they, has he met Kulderi much since he took over as Rhinos coaching? Or like, this would be the first final, would it? That uh, yeah, first final, yeah, first final. Uh, Ken, the the beat Kulderi earlier on this year. I think it was three okay, twelve yeah. to one fifteen. Um, uh, in the group stages, but never would have met in a big knockout game, to the best of my knowledge. Ken has a phenomenal record at club level. He brought oh, Birds yeah. Ar- yeah, he brought Birds to the All Ireland Club final in ninety two when they were beaten by Kiltarmer. Brought Kulderi to the All Ireland Club final in twenty twelve, and he's looking to do three in a row at Rhinus. And uh, have to I have to admire his um his post match interview after he couldn't have he couldn't have big Kulderi up any more than he did. He passed in by me. I was selling a lot of tickets. He passed in by me in Brendan's Park the other day going to the match, and he was obviously impressed with what he saw. Um. Because he he spent more time talking about Kuleri than he did Rhinus in the post match interview. <laughs> Interesting one on Kuleri as well. Uh, since Burby Kuleri in two thousand six county final, Kuleri have won every county final they've been in since then. Okay. Probably 11, 12, 15, 18. Um, so like they're unbelievably hard bet when they get to that stage. And as one of the viewers said, there they're the epitome of uh, a rural club. Uh, the, the heart you have to you can't but admire you know, their tradition and how they keep churning out players and players. And it's funny, like guys that maybe wouldn't have been on maybe school teams in St. Brendan's community school, they go and play to on that green jersey for Kuleri and they just step up and the chest comes out and they deliver big, big performances. Um, so that'd be an interesting county final in two weeks' time. Fintan, I know you saw the Claren Bridge uh, and Crockwell semi-final. We are probably expecting a, a bit more from this Galway semi-final, but it wound up Claren Bridge 3-18. Crockwell one fourteen, I believe Evan Nyland scored 13 points uh, with Henry Shefflin uh, there having his eyes on him. Potentially could be the next kind of full-time free taker for Galway, maybe if he doesn't coax Joe Canning back. But uh, what, what were your thoughts on that? The Bridge have won a fail a title in recent weeks. They've been winning all around them at underage level. They're on a bit of a crest of a wave at the moment. Yeah, it definitely looks like that. Like, I was looking at their team. Like When you actually look through it, the amount of them all those Galway all Ireland minor winning teams the recently they started with say Nyland's group all the way up like I think they were 10 or 11 guys that have played in the all Ireland minor final or won a medal um, even like Gavin Lee who would have won one this year from the 2020 championship if you get me that was played in July he's now well eligible obviously for Tarnbridge's senior side and they put him in corner forward and he got one of the goals um, so they're just coming with a really really strong team I mean it's 10 years since they won the all Ireland club obviously Um like Barry Daly came on as a sub. Um, I think one four. I think they're the only two. I don't think there's anyone starting. So they kind of regenerated as a completely new team. But they obviously have some very very talented guys. When you look at uh, like Nyland is obviously, you know, he obviously takes every box in terms of his free taking, and he generally does, or you know, sixty fives and that. Like, but he's obviously he's also a very very good shooter in terms of the way they get the ball to him, and he's able to pop it off right and left. The Keen Salmon in full forward, who's an absolutely huge. Uh, towering kind of figure and gives them a big focal point 
And then uh, TJ Brennan, who I suppose got a few runouts under Shane O'Neill as a kind of senior defender, they had him kind of sitting in the pocket against the wind in the first half. Uh, he was kind of managed to mop up a lot of ball. And uh, like when they got the half time ahead, having played against the wind, and then the two goals came in the third quarter, it was kind of one way traffic then and it was kind of all over. And obviously, Crawley lost uh, Night Healy to a red card. Um, and, you know, like Thomas Monaghan was kind of trying hard, but it was always going to be uh, tough for them. It looked, one of the things I thought about it was like the pitch, like, you know, there was a couple of times where basically the ball was almost kind of underneath the sod and like the ref had stop it and throw it in. It looked tough conditions, you know, like I think about, like I was looking at Porky Cueve yesterday, it was in brilliant condition for hurling for early November. Um, I've seen a couple of the tip matches in recent weeks. Semple Stadium looks looks very, very good. I mean, I suppose it's not unusual for different reasons. Galway playing their other their county championships in kind of November, but like Kenny Park, Nathan Roy, you know, it could be tough now in a couple of weeks if that's where the county, or maybe it'll be in Pierce Stadium. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But definitely very, very impressed with Clarence Bridge, especially, I mean, they only came out of the senior B last year um, to kind of get up to this kind of stage. Um, but like, looking back like a couple of years ago, the way the Galway system works, obviously they have a chance to get into the senior A every year. Like one of the years St. Thomas won it, they took them to a point in maybe the first round of the quarter final and went extra time. And obviously you just think with the amount of that underage talent, I mean, you know, going back to the stuff we were talking about earlier, maybe about the court teams, like when you have that volume of players playing underage for the county, you have to think it's going to kind of transfer at some stage. Um, but it is interesting as well for a kind of a former all Ireland club winning team. Like it's only 10 years before you think maybe it's just, it's just different reasons. It happens to different clubs, but like, you know, on a weekend when was it Colin Fenley, TJ Reid, Noan Reid, like 15 years after, won their 10th medal, um, Cambridge just regenerated and it's just a completely new young team um, that they've kind of put together. And that's a very impressive way to get to get to a final. Um, this was very interesting as well. The uh, you know the other semi-final, obviously, that I was kind of looking forward to, the kind of local derby, Gort and St. Thomas. Um, kind of words started filtering around on Saturday that that was probably going to be off because of COVID issues. Um, so I think there's talk that we'll find out today maybe a bit about uh, when it might be on. At the moment, like the goal final is on the 21st. So presuming that the refix does go ahead next week, maybe that's a bit of a benefit for Cambridge and um, having kind of two weeks to, to kind of play around with. But, uh, you know, still looking at, from the outside and looking at the kind of results of far, like St. Thomas do seem to kind of, they are the, the, the still remain the team to beat with the kind of scores they've been putting up and how they've been kind of beat teams of the last couple of years. But just interesting, I suppose, you know, you're looking at it maybe thinking, Turlock Moore are going to come with all their kind of underage talent on medals in the finals. Instead, we're going to have a new side um the challenge in the final out that haven't been there the last time they were in the final was um the year that 2011 when they got or they won the Ireland club in march and they uh, got to the final again in october so definitely it's a big big step forward for a young team you know without a doubt uh, one of our viewers said in there that fergal healy and alan kearns are still talking out which is just absolutely crazy ml89 fergal healy and alan kearns won the 94 minor all Ireland together and both togged for semi-final that longevity that's like the guts of 30 years playing that's at senior level absolutely outstanding yeah that's amazing i i did like i saw kerns on the sideline but i hadn't realized i wasn't sure was involved in the coaching or not like but you could see him there um obviously you knew that Healy was kind of involved and obviously his brother niall obviously who had got sent off but was still a very very key player for them when he bought 36 is that he is now you know and so it kind of seems um a key forward for them but um they're kind of very disappointed you know to kind of lose that like just reading up kind of beforehand and kind of talking to a couple of people who's pitted as a pretty kind of narrow game and obviously Crawl hadn't been in the final since 15 uh, when they lost in a replay to Sarsfield so you know maybe it would look then as a big chance to get back to the final but there was no disputing uh, who was the better team um, and like I've said earlier just the, the three things that stood out just the fact that with the Brennan just kind of mopped up so much in defence and he you know Brian behind him who's a strong full back um, and Nyland that sent it forward like you know you'd imagine like that they that Brennan and Nyland would have caught the eye of Sheffield I think that was the first game he was at was it in terms of uh, first goal by club game I think he was due to attend both county semi-finals but um yeah. so that was the first I suppose the lads are putting up the hand early doors on it in terms of uh kind of for, for the audition process for 2022 you know definitely I think it worked out well for Henry with the game being called off he was able to go down to Nolan Park yesterday exactly. watch, yeah, watch, Shamrocks, yeah, yeah. watch Shamrocks in action but uh obviously whenever the, the goal goal we were in no mad rush to, to play their county final because there's no provincial campaign to go into so they probably have a bit of leeway with that maybe where other counties wouldn't just one other result in the goal we've seen hurling championship a relegation playoff mullia 112 uh ballandarine 111 so ballandarine defeat portumna earlier on this year in the senior b and uh, it looks like they're now relegated down the ranks again which would definitely be disappointing for them uh, just a quick reminder to subscribe to our game on YouTube. So if there's a button there on the right-hand side, just below Finton there, press that button, you'll get on, and turn on push notifications and you'll get a reminder anytime where uh, a show is upcoming. And uh, 
remember that Patreon is available if you if you find the YouTube maybe a bit tricky or anything like that. The, the YouTube, I said it there, like a, like a real rural country person. But the Patreon is ideal. It's five euro per month, and you can just turn it on and listen away to the show, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out running or walking. And as the saying says, whether you're if you're lying in the bath, you can you can turn it on and listen to it. Um, and obviously remember that today's show is brought to you by Arga Retro. Go to argaretro.com. Uh, and type in the promo code our game to get 15% off uh, just on the leash final I'm obviously wearing the leash Gansey here Fintan I know you, you didn't see much of this but again another ridiculously high scoring game uh, I was at a final in I think it was Boris Kilcotton's first final to win they drew with Rat Downey Earl it was something like this this crazy kind of scoring and Clock Balakala Boris Kilcotton ended up 125 for a Clock Balakala Boris Kilcotton 221 so Clock Balakala do two in a row um, they showed serious bottle along the way as well as Stephen Picky Maher said in a post-match interview there were six points down after seven minutes they battled back uh, to, to uh, they battled back and were in were in contention at half time they were still down by three at the second water break but they never panicked uh, only taking the lead for the first time in 50 on the 55th minute so this is a composure it's funny when you, a team gets over the line having maybe not won big games in recent years all of a sudden, they have composure that they didn't have before. That Kilcormac Kalati and Offaly is one that definitely stands out to me. They'd been years trying to beat us. They eventually beat us in 12 and uh, in the 12 semi final. Then all of a sudden, they were able to win tight games. But it's amazing how this happens with teams. Once It's like a release valve almost once you get over the line uh, in a tight game. You have that muscle memory to keep doing it then in big games and not panic. Yeah, it's, it's a big hurdle to kind of, I suppose, overcome for sides. The one thing that was interesting with this, I think I'm saying, so Clark won the 2020 final in August. Um, and St. Rhinos will be doing something similar. Like So it's, it's interesting if you were to talk to the two of them, obviously it'd be unbelievably special and kind of an achievement in the space of three months to, as Clark have won their second county title. But like, did that stand to them in terms of the momentum, you know, the fact that they've been kind of peaking for kind of early on um, in the year? Um, like I heard Ken Hogan a couple of weeks ago talking about I think they played each other in a challenge game two weeks before their respective county finals in August and I think Locker picked up a couple of injuries but they both needed a game so it worked out perfectly you know someone over the board to play a challenge match um, I think they Locker picked up a couple of injuries but they still managed to kind of win it um, but it just be interesting you know probably have to ask them themselves in terms of how the year has gone in terms of planning it like but it just seems like the bounce and that kind of momentum has obviously stood to them both you know in terms of one has reached the Offaly county final and the other has won the leash um leash title but i mean like for the thing about clock for Val college is interesting i suppose 2009 when they won it it was the first time in so long um and they've kind of been a regular presence ever since in terms of winning finals but this is the first time they've done back to back and obviously the fact that it's within uh, a few months of each other you know it's kind of going to make it a very kind of special season for them um and the other thing i was looking at was interesting in terms of lancer club now in terms of momentum so they're playing rapperies which is probably i think was the first yeah. final i think was done now, I know Wexford, but they did that, and Waterford did something similar. They basically just separated the hurling football this year because there's so many dual clubs. But like I think Ballygunner are going to be waiting eight weeks, and I think Rapparees is maybe eight or nine as well in terms of the county finals. So, look, it'll be kind of wiser after the event. We'll see whether that kind of momentum thing kind of stands up to them um, in terms of kind of keep helping yourself uh, kind of keep uh, ticking over um, in terms of for the Lancer Club Championship, which is uh, coming up into view now in a couple of weeks. Definitely. Yeah. Just a quick one on Boris Kilcotton. Um... They were there. This is the third final in a row they've been beaten in. And um, the last two finals, they were disappointing. They definitely didn't disappoint here. This was an absolutely brilliant game. Um, their score of 221 would have won every single Lee Turner final in history, bar one. So, like, it, it, it's it's sick, it's sick for them, but at least in comparison to the other two finals, they definitely they definitely showed up on this occasion. ML89 yeah. just says, Clock Balakal have a huge chance in Leinster. If Rapparees and Leinster haven't played in so long, and the Leash clubs have probably been performing better than Wexford clubs uh, for a few years, yeah, I probably I probably wouldn't disagree with that. Just a quick one on the on the best players on show. So I know the lads on Leash uh, Leash TV gave it to Aidan Carby, who was brilliant for the, for the winners. Uh, Lee Clear very good at wing back. He held Aaron Dunphy to three points and while scoring two to himself. It's kind of the how the the new uh, the new wing back or the modern wing back is. Uh, Picky Maher scored 14 points, but I believe Willie Dunphy was top class again for the clock Balakali. He had five from play, and uh, they're going to need him uh, at his best to, to beat Rapparees. And I saw a few comments in there, and we, we'd have to mention, of course, um, the buff getting stuck in the toilets in, in Omore Park. He was out in the pitch celebrating with the clock Balakali lads. 
uh, and obviously went in to relieve himself before making the journey home and was lo- was locked in the toilets in uh there's i feel like there should be a series or something like the adventures of buff or something like this because uh it's like um it's like uh father dougal said in father ted he seems to always get himself into all sorts of hilarious jams um but he's just uh he, he actually was in the pub with the clock balacala lads then i think last night again so he'd so obviously he, he, he got out okay in the end yeah. he, he got out yeah because i imagine you can imagine him doing a facebook live or something during the night from the from the toilets or something like that but that was yet another one of the interesting stories of the day um just moved on to so, yeah. so, so, something on that happened i think it was one of the after one of the championship matches in simple stadium a few years back uh Remember the press corps, Michael Moyner from the Examiner. He wrote a column after about it, but I think he went down and something like that happened. And apparently, he was ringing other members of you know journalists who were up still, you know, filing their reports outside. Someone to open the door and let him out. I think someone did eventually, anyway. But uh, he was he was stuck in a similar position, you know. Yeah, I think Vincent Hogan and Roy Curtis famously got stuck in Parky Cueve years ago, um, with a dog growling in their faces trying to get out of a car park <laughs> or something. Apparently, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can find. I think Vincent did a piece online about that. Um, just quickly wrap up some of the other county finals: Westmead County final, Raharney twenty-one points, uh, Castletown Gagan eighteen points. I believe Killian Doyle was absolutely outstanding for Raharney. He fired over eleven points, six frees, and uh, Willow Callahan uh, of Off the Ball and Midland Sport has a t- uh, has a tweet up. To show him one of his sideline cuts, absolutely beautiful from the terrace side uh, in Cusick Park. He fired over two of them. Uh, that's a big win for Harney, who have taken who have taken scalps in Leinster before. Uh, beat Kulderi, I think, when Kulderi won in two thousand and ten. I think they beat them that they beat them that year in Leinster. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can go on uh, and do something in Leinster and then just some of the other county finals. Uh, the Tyrone County Final, Aero Carrick Moore did it back to back. They beat Owen Rua Dungannon, 16 points to nine. Uh, Dermot Begley, 7.63. Sean Ogo Garman was on top form as well up front. He fired over three points. Uh, Middletown Nafina won the Armagh final, 2.20 to Keedy Log Darrells, 2.12. This was a feisty enough affair. Mark Toll was sent off for Keedy, and I think that allowed Middletown to really turn the tide. This game was tight, really tight up until, up until that point. But Middletown hit 1.8 in the fourth quarter to turn around a two-point halftime deficit. And that makes it three in a row for them up in Armagh. And they've really been the dominant force over the last decade. Uh, in Cavan, uh, Cootill Celtic 2-12, Pierce Oggs 2-11. So obviously a very, very close game there. Uh, interesting, very interesting in Clare though, Finton, the, the relegation playoffs. Um, and it seems like this is played off over a league basis with score difference and things coming into it. So at least in fairness, you don't lose a one-off game and get relegated. The, the worst, you know, in a vertical commas, the worst team should go down uh, with this on this league basis. But O'Callaghan Mills, 13 points against to Clooney Quinns, 1 8. Crusheen, 117. Clare Castle, 115. But both Crusheen and Clare Castle go down to uh, go down to the intermediate ranks in Clare. Like that's two big names relegated from, from Clare Senior Hurling. Huge, yeah. And the thing that strikes me to me, I'd say, is just how competitive it is when you look at those four teams because. Uh, Callum Mills were in last year's county final. Uh, Cooney Quinn were in one a couple of years ago. I think Peter Duggan was unbelievable for them that year. Uh, lost the replay. Crusheen, it's 10 years since they were in a Munster club final uh, when the Pierce were kind of getting going in Munster club and Crusheen went to replay and they could have won it the first day. Um, and they were going to back titles then. But obviously, Clare Castle are a team with like a club with just massive history and Clare Senior. But it's just, there's been a shift in Clare you can see over the last while in terms of like, I'm looking at like she's St. Joseph's to Robert Field lost Claire in the media final last week. Uh, you know, once going down and trying to get back up is obviously quite diff- difficult. And obviously themselves in Clare Castle have kind of dominated Clare Hurling um in kind of the nineties and two thousands. And then if you look ahead to to next week, I suppose it's kind of a sign of the changing the shift has taken place in the landscape. Like you Ballier, who okay, they're going for the third title, but they when they won it in 2016, that was their first title, and they're playing Aina Kilimona, who were in their first final, the combination club, and go for their first title, um, obviously on on Sunday. Um, so it's obviously just a sign of the kind of change that has happened in the county in terms of the kind of bigger names, kind of more illustrious sides with kind of a lot of history, um, and the kind of competitive nature on it. You know that if you have a couple of off years, um, that you could, you know, that you obviously can get sucked into it, like. But it is interesting that kind of system, isn't it? The fact that it's it's not a one-off game, um, you know, like for example, like the Cork relegation final a couple of weeks ago was decided on a penalty shootout, which I think was a crazy way, and just a really tough way to kind of decide your senior hurling status. Um, 
like I think if it's over a couple of games like that, obviously as the system seems to have gone to scoring difference, you know, then then that's fair enough. But definitely, yeah, it just struck me as kind of pretty big names gone down to gone down from Clare Senior ranks uh, for next year. I'd have to agree. I think the league basis um, does mean that the better teams should stay. Like, it's not just a one-off game. Anyone can be anyone on a given day. But over a league basis, the cream should rise to the co- should rise to the top. But it's definitely uh, two big guns. Like, I remember Burr played Clare Castle in an absolutely epic All-Ireland Club semi-final uh, down in Turles many, many moons ago. Obviously, Dalo and the Sparrow and uh, Ken Ralph and a few others were playing. So it's for, definitely... For, um, for, Fergie too, he was that, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of history there. Uh, just a quick one, uh, Fintan, I mentioned earlier about Bally McCarvey winning 40 in a row uh, in Waterford Senior uh, Ladies Football Titles. An unbelievable achievement. Um, we won't talk about whether it's good or bad for Waterford Ladies Football, but can you think of any other great kind of GA dynasties like that? Cross McGlain will probably be one, Bally Gunner at the moment in Waterford. Any other ones down through history that, that, you'd, uh, that you'd remember fondly or ones that you wouldn't remember fondly if it was uh, opposition teams in Cork or anything like that? Like 40, there's nothing comparable to 40, I think, really, is there? No. Like, you know, that's absolutely unbelievable. Like, I, I, the way it's gone now, like at senior level, like anyone who gets close to kind of double figures in a row, um, is kind of unbelievable. Like, you know, um, I the modern thing that kind of stood out for me was the Curra Finn one last year in Galway because it was 49 games unbeaten when you look in the group system and all that. Um, and they'd obviously done seven in a row and they'd done one the All Ireland clubs. Um, and all that, you know, so in terms of their the kind of the scale of their dominance, but yeah, 40 year old is unbelievable. Like, I think Michael, Michael Ryan is involved with them, isn't he? And he's also, yeah. he's also this year been over the Nair who are in the Waterford football final. They won on Saturday night. Obviously, this is all his own clubs, you know, in terms of the, the different names. I think it was over four mile water hurlers as well, like you know. So for a man who kind of stepped away from county management a couple of years ago, he's uh, he's kept himself pretty busy, like you know, so uh. I'm sure Those boys that, never step away. Those sort of lads never step away. They're always heavily involved yeah. at the coal fest somewhere. I'd highly recommend uh, anybody that can to get their hands on on his autobiography. Um, and while I'm talking about autobiographies, Fintan, you were obviously involved with with the two Milers recently. Um, this is Myler, uh, a family memoir. This is a flesh from the Flesh and Blood series uh, as part of Hero Books. Uh, it must have been hugely enjoyable uh, doing this because obviously you're you're a cork man yourself. Um, and you would have like followed their progress very, very closely. But uh, it was some fascinating insights in this. Yeah, it was, it was very enjoyable. It was really, really good to work with the two lads. I suppose it was kind of a nice mix and I'm kind of interested in it from the point of view, the fact that one and obviously excelled in soccer, um, you know, so something kind of different to kind of report on, kind of work on, uh, kind of dealing with David and that. And then obviously I just think that the, John's kind of journey is just interesting in terms of the various counties he's been in for a guy who basically grew up in Wexford, Boarded in Gormanstown College in Mead, where he would have been coached by someone like Joe Lennon, down the Ireland winning captain, and played with Ogie Moore. And then he's had various kind of stints between Cork, Kerry, uh, Carlow, and Wexford in terms of county and club over the last couple of years. Um, you know, my mother uh, was from Kilmoyley in North Kerry, and I have cousins down there, so kind of would be a sort of kind of another kind of affiliation that way in terms of his kind of relationship with them. And they're obviously out, he won another county title with them. And um, like we were saying the night of the launch, that in terms of when we finished wrapping up the book kind of in august he had won six county titles and then he actually had the seventh uh a couple of weeks later so we said that's already one admission that we'll have to that we'd have to highlight so and they're in the munster club championship in a couple of weeks but um yeah look it was it was really interesting to work on and like it's funny you say that thing about michael Lane in terms of not stepping away like john white would strike me as that kind of guy like you know he'll he'll kind of keep going at various teams i mean when he stepped away as Carlo manager, he took on a Cork under 15 and under 16 team for two years, and that team ended up winning the 20 All Ireland this year. So, you know, some of the guys that the Roach twins and Tommy O'Connell, some guys that probably progress into the senior ranks over the next uh, couple of seasons, you know, he would have kind of worked with all them and just a man that is kind of absolutely enthralled to the game, you know. So, um, yeah, great, great to work with the lads and uh, kind of great to get the final product out there now, um, over the, over the next few weeks and months, you know. I'd say you had to catch up on a bit of sleep after. Not not simple now do, between all that transcriptions and, and putting it all together, but I definitely would highly recommend anybody. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great read. And it's funny you mentioned there about uh, guys not stepping away. Mickey Graham was actually uh, involved at Mullen Yachta yesterday. He was came in in a coaching capacity after Cavan finished. And this, I suppose the split season allows this to happen with the really good coaches and the really good managers that are in really high demand. Uh, it'd be very hard for them to commit to a club when you know the county season is you know takes up so much time but now they kind of can come in after and he was he obviously brought Mullen to Leinster success in 2018 and he's obviously they're back on the road again now too 
definitely. I, I think this is something we could see a bit more. And actually, I did a piece during the summer before Tip played Clare with uh, Brian Lawler of Kiladangan, just talking about Sean Tracy's role coaching Clare and with Kiladangan and how it was kind of working for them. And he just said the split season is the best thing that ever happened to us in terms of kind of retaining services. Because he's making a point before, if you try to do it, it's just going to lead to a little bit of tension in one camp or another because you both have games upcoming and it's just not really going to work is it that kind of splitting um, of your kind of services. But he kind of said, I think Kiladangan had him one night a week. It was a dedicated night when Clare weren't training. And then obviously when Clare were training, uh, he was with them full time. They were able to have a good go at it. And obviously, you know, it didn't do too bad. He only losing by a point in a... I was at a point or two, I think, in a in the county semi final um a couple of weeks ago. And like I suppose Brian Lawler would have coached Kildare himself. So I suppose this is his prediction. He reckoned around the country he could see this happening. Um that guys will be able to manage the time a bit better. And he says it could have a knock on effect and it'll be great for clubs uh, around the country. So like, yeah, that, that Graham one is a great is a great example. Like, you know, he obviously ha- hasn't lost that affiliation that he had with them. I mean, he was double jobbing, wasn't he the time they were in the all around club semi final? Crazy, yeah. 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 So um He's kind of back with them again, like you know. Um, you were at that game, I think, weren't you? In terms, yeah, of, no, uh, I was, yeah. Uh, it's just it's gas, like because it'd be interesting I think, to see, you know. I think it allows uh, more expertise in coaching to go into clubs, which can only be a good thing. Like, just I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's, you know, there would be an opportunity for a club to maybe work with Paul Canurk for two months after Limerick finish up, or work with all these top coaches. And it's good that they won't just exclusively be with uh with counties i think that's great just lastly finton before i let you go uh shane fives obviously stepped away uh with waterford over the weekend that's you know coming hot in the heels after kevin Moore stepping away there's been some amount of change when you think about with waterford from that 2017 all ireland final to now and liam cahill has overseen you know a massive transition it's it's quite amazing that they've stayed so competitive and done so well given you know if you look at you know in terms of personnel there's been a massive shift in personnel in the last couple of years i think i'd have to you'd have to double check this now but i think of the 20 players they used in that 17 final i think three quarters of them are no longer involved on the panel but that's probably including so to be fair like someone like Teddy de who was out in but last year but i think they had very few of them basically available to them last season because you know stephen o'keefe has gone uh brick watch philip manny park manny's been kind of out injured um I suppose the two, the two retirements of one and five probably aren't too surprising over the last couple of years. You know, they are the last couple of days. Uh, obviously, kind of pillars of that set up for so long, but it just, I think, it reinforces the change that Cahill has overseen and how successfully it has been overseen in the sense that they haven't slipped away. You know, sometimes if you lose that many players in such a short space of time, especially from a team to reach an all the final, you can expect maybe a little bit of different fortunes. But I mean, they got the all semi final and all the final and over the last two seasons and you know it's obviously no disgrace with the, the the caliber of the side that they've lost to like everyone else in the county is losing everyone else in the country is uh is losing to them like you know but it is interesting i suppose in terms of like Moran was there for so long and uh five was kind of corner back on that team you know it, it, it kind of just shows i suppose the, the the shift that has taken place and then i suppose link to that touching on what we're talking about goal earlier i suppose a lot of people are going to be arguing that is it you know, the the team that obviously Waterford lost in that 17 final? Are we going to see something similar with Galway over the next while? Is it going to be kind of an overhaul um, of that side? Um, and obviously, the I think that's probably one of the most interesting things about Shepard, isn't it? You know, what sort of scale or change he's going to oversee in terms of personnel? He obviously has, to all intents and purposes, the kind of raw materials there with all those minor players to kind of bring through, obviously, you know, with the proviso that it's under 17 and there's a, there's a big gap, like, you know, but it'll be interesting to see um, what sort of changes or kind of what sort of personnel he's looking to introduce uh, going forward to next season? No, without a doubt, uh, the county is a bit away yet, but there'll be, I'm sure there'll be a lot of moving and shaking, and whether lads are involved or whether not involved, or whether Canning is coming out of retirement or whether he's not over the next while, there'll be a lot of discussion. But just quickly, as we do every every Monday on the show, we have our go of the week. Uh, Fintan, yours was obvious enough, I think. It was, uh, as you said, uh, what did you say to me in the text? The man, Patrick Horgan from the Glen. Um, as he's as he's best known, but uh, I'm sure yeah, there, were, I'll, there was a lot. I'll, 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 I'll do, I'm only going to obviously on the couple of games that I saw. I mean, I'm sure you can make a, a convincing case with you look at the leash uh, or the final or, or, or for their affairs like that. Like, but yeah, I think one 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 eleven out of one seventeen to get your club into a county final. The last three points of the game, one five from play as well. Which I suppose actually that's probably the the point to make. Usually, when you see guys scoring massive scores, you're probably thinking a lot of them were from frees. And sometimes that happens with kind of Horgan scores, but it was interesting yesterday. He scored a lot from play um, for, for one five. So he he get my vote anyway, Bernie. 
I'm sure there was a lot of going, Oggy boy, in the park yesterday, no doubt. I'll tell, um, it, tell you, the, the, last, the last five minutes, like, it was like the whole of the Glen subs and management team were just kind of, they'd gone off the seats and were kind of standing on the line. And when he scored, like, the last three points, the point, the free put over was literally right in front of their dugout, like, and, like, they nearly all jumped up in the air and were like, I thought we were going to, like, chair him out straight away, even though it was a couple of minutes left to play in the game, like, but, yeah, it was, it was a big win for Morris, like, but, just to finishing off the job now i mean they've been in the last two finals and lost them you know that's not going to be uh that's a stat that they'll kind of want to won't want to have you know losing three finals in a row you mentioned boris and Austria earlier you know um so uh so yeah it'll be interesting to be exciting to, to kind of see how that goes very much so um I, I only saw the highlights of the leash final but my go of the week would be willie dunphy five from players and clock balakata do back to back in by all accounts one of the best county finals that's ever been played in Leash. So uh, as both would say, hail hail to to uh, Willie Dunphy and uh, Finton. Thanks a million for joining joining us today. I really appreciate it. And as I just said uh, about uh, Finton's book uh, with the two the two milers, a really really great read. I'd encourage anybody. A great a nice uh, a nice stocking filler, Finton. In fairness, coming up to yeah, Christmas, that's, that's, an ideal stocking filler. That's what we're all about at this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and thanks again to our sponsors Argo Retro again coming up to Christmas one of these retro jerseys whether it's the Leafs jersey or wherever your county colours are a great present uh, for any family members or friends uh, go to argoretro.com and type in the promo code our game to get 15% off and to subscribe to our game on YouTube there's just a button there to the right hand side just below Finton press subscribe and turn on your push notifications and you'll get a message anytime the show is going live and also you can catch the show on Patreon. It's five euro per month. So it just takes uh it makes it very, very easy to listen no matter where you are. It's just five euro a month and we'd really, really appreciate your support. Uh thanks again, Fintan, for joining us, and we'll see you all on Thursday for the Hurling Show. No worries, Ronnie.